Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Uh, well, cast time once again, and um, let me preface this. Um, one, uh, there's gonna be a fair amount of moving parts on this video, so just, you know, so just get ready for a few mistakes here and there. Okay, um, and on top of that, um, this is also a fairly well hastily put together. I, uh, I took one of my, uh, I took one of my several naps today, and uh, on one of those naps, I forgot to, I forgot to set my alarm, so I actually ended up oversleeping. So I kind of, I kind of ended up a little bit behind. So there's, there's a fair, again, there's, a, or there's a fair amount that I want to do on this video, and again, there's a fair amount of, uh, of stuff on here as well. So, so I'm having to put all this together by the seat of my pants. Uh, but anyway, for the music. This is going to be uh, Spectral Spire, Beyond the Realms of Xena. Uh, this album here came out about a month ago. It's a uh, dungeon synth. And again, this this one here was also something that I, I, found, I found at the last second. Um, main reason being is uh, I I just now noticed this. I mean, I, I think mention has been made of this, but I it just now, it just now clicked with me. I can oftentimes find out if a piece of work is copyrighted or not just by reading the description. Um, if it doesn't say any, if it if it doesn't have like a a track list that says licensed to YouTube by then whoever, then it should be safe. Should. Um, I kind of I kind of touched on this yes on yesterday's stream when talking to DJ Screw. Um, he's really big on lo-fi music and. I am too. Um, it's, I mean, it's part of my balanced breakfast for if that makes any sense at all. But uh, it's not something I listen to 24/7. But yeah, I'll. It's it's good background music, but just I'm. It just felt like dungeon synth this morning. So. Anyway, um, one of the video, one of the lo-fi videos I was playing, it explicitly said in the description that this is free to use for live streams and videos. I'm like, oh hell yeah! It's an awesome moment to do that because up until that point, it, it was pretty much a guessing game. I mean, one of the reasons why I play Dungeon Sin so much is more often than not, it's safe. It's it's not copyrighted or anything. It's, you know, it's free to use. But now that I know I can find, I can get a yay or nay just by reading the description. This um, you know, this actually opens up a lot of options for me. So, but that was one of the reasons why I found this at the last second. There was, um, I was looking for, uh, instrumental acoustic music, but a lot of the stuff that I was finding was copyrighted. So, good on them for doing that. So, but anyway, let me, let me bring this to the start. Let's go ahead and fire it away. Oh, and, um, this here is called Order of the Black Arts. It's the YouTube channel. It's one of the newer ones that I subscribe to. Okay, so, so let us begin. Um, well, um, I'm playing a fair amount of Gems of War. Just, I think um, I did all. Okay, um, I can't I can't remember much about my stream yesterday, but uh, I think I ended up aborting it because uh, I was just falling asleep, just starting to doze off. Um, yesterday and the day before, my my uh, sleep has been all dream and nightmare filled. So when that happens, it's like I hadn't slept at all. But yeah, um, but just, but for the short time that I was on, it went pretty good. Played a fair amount off stream as well. Um, it just, yeah, um, things went pretty good there as well. It just, it did get to where um, at some point my my luck pretty much ran out. Plus I was starting to make stupid mistakes, so I just went ahead and called it off. Not much point in trying to continue when that happens. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I I think this music came from Germany. I think. Oh, it came from uh, Croatia. Never mind. I still got to figure out where that country is. It's, believe it or not, I've, I've only, uh, I've, or, Believe it or not, 
I've only heard the name Croatia like here and there, but I've never actually paid attention to where it exactly is. I mean, it could be a freaking Africa for all I know. So, but anyway, um, and uh, I also, and also during the work week, my shoulder was getting worse and worse. Uh, and um, I actually thought it was uh, shoulder impingement. I was watching, um, I think it was Athlete and X. It's a, it's a fitness channel. A guy, uh, a guy, a guy by the name of Jeff Cavalier. He's one of the most popular ones. But he was, he was talking about shoulder impingement. Um, and uh, I think, uh, what are the, what are the reasons, what are the reasons why I, I thought it was impingement was because he had a thing up. Uh, he had a he had a thing about doing dips like you gotta do them a certain way. Um, but I, and I actually was trying to do them that certain way, but um, just at one point it's whenever I put up uh, whenever I put pressure, or whenever I put a lot of weight on my arm, on my left arm, that's what I would feel the ah oh! like right on my left right on my left shoulder. But. But uh, yeah, I did a, I did kind of a self check, and it didn't hurt. I think there's like three or four different tests you have to do. But uh, granted, I'm, I'm pretty sure a physical therapist would have to actually, actually check it himself. But the problem is, is I, I have a, my, uh, especially now that I work part time, my medical insurance isn't exactly great. I mean, it's like a, a three thousand dollar deductible. So basically, I gotta put the whole bill. I gotta put the whole bill for any kind of medical treatment I get. I already have a just uh, when I injured my big toe. Just to have it looked at was uh, 250 bucks, and um, all she said was basically take ibuprofen and put ice on it. And I did neither of those things, and and within a day or two, the problem went away. So, good. So uh, that's basically a two hundred fifty dollar donation on my part. So. So I. I don't want to go through the same thing again and having my, having a physical. Oh, and now it's another thing too. When, I I saw a physical therapist a long time ago about my neck. And uh, he immediately scheduled five uh five separate appointments. I don't, I don't know if I actually got a medical bill out of it or not. I don't think I did, but this is like several years ago. And um, at the end of it all, he said uh, if my problem still wasn't cured, he was gonna schedule me to the emergency room. But uh, even then, the diag diagnosis that he had and what he had me doing wasn't helping. Like, like every few hours. I'm supposed to like do all these neck stretches like even in the middle of my job I still have to do these neck stretches you know I don't you know cause it, it sounds like it sounds like putting a fire with gasoline because even during my normal daily routine I'm turning my head constantly so doing these extra stretches on top of it is again it's like you're it's just you're compounding the problem I you know and I try to explain this to him but he, he just went forward with the, went forward with the treatment anyway. You know, still gotta keep stretching my neck, even though I'm already, you know, moving my head, you know, constantly moving my head around, you know, regardless. So. But yeah, I don't really want to go through the same. I mean, I don't, I don't really want to go through the same thing if I saw a therapist to set, you know, for for my shoulder. I don't want to have him to tell me, oh, just do these shoulder stretches every few hours, but dude, I'm at a job where I'm using my shoulder constantly. I mean, extra shoulder stretches, it's, you know, it's basically going to make it worse. It's just excessive movement. So, so I don't know. I guess um, I'd have to wait for my next vacation and ho 
hope my shoulder is at least, you know, mostly cured by then. Or, I guess the only real ultimate way of uh, fixing my shoulder is to quit my job, but can't do that. I mean, I basically make too much money now. So, but, but enough of that. Um. Let me fix it. Bit of a brain fart. Okay, anyway, um, I also watched a gameplay, or a gameplay walkthrough of a game called EXP War Trauma. Holy shit, what a game! Or, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't call it a game. I wouldn't really call it a game as much as I'd call it like an, an interactive video. So, but it, it's it's centered around a, a German World War II veteran. And it just, you know, PTSD and all the mental illnesses that he had. Um, you're... Uh, the easiest way I, I can explain it is it's a journey to the center of the mind. Or a journey to the center of his mind. Just... Um, how mentally fucked up somebody can be. But yeah, but like I said, it there's not much act there's not much actual action in this game. Again, it's more it's Oh, how can I call it? Or what would be a way to call it? A point and click video adventure? I guess that could be a correct term for it um but but yeah um just some pretty uh pretty disturbing stuff the i probably say the one drawback though the, the voice acting it, i mean it wasn't terrible it just it seemed out of place it's like it was done by one guy i don't for all i know he might have been the the game dev himself like, but like I said, you'd, you'd have to hear the voice. You'd have, you'd have to hear the guy talking. It just, for me, it didn't really fit. It didn't really fit in with the game. So, but uh, otherwise, another thing I liked about it was uh, was the jump scares in that game. All the jump scares. Um, it's the only game I could think of uh, where after a jump scare would occur, I would actually rewind it a little bit to find out what the hell it was that came after me. You know, because whereas most other most other horror games, you know, you know, you would go through the jump scare, you know, but then after that, I just move right along in the video, not really care, you know, not really caring two shits about it. But in this game here, because they use um, they use some pretty interesting images. You know, they weren't just they weren't just mere scary looking faces that they throw at you, along with a super loud noise. You know, but it would, you know, some weird, strange humanoid figure would be, you know, would be jump scared, you know. And it, I would, uh, I would actually rewind the footage back a little bit, you know, and restart and try to pause it at just the right time, just to see whatever the hell it was that came at me. It's like, whoa, that, that's kind of messed up, you know. So, so yeah, they they did a really good job with the. Uh, jump scares oh oh and um that was something else i forgot to mention just on the title screen alone totally different from other uh, title screens i've seen in this game here you can choose to start experience um uh, load experience but you know that kind of thing most other games i most other games i play it's just you know start continue options quit you know that's it or or start load options quit and that's it but not Start experience, you know, i.e. traumatic experience. I found that to be pretty interesting. I mean, you know, again, I can't really think of a single game that uh where they have that. So, so good on that for doing that. But yeah, that's definitely a keeper game right there. I mean, I don't, 
for something like this, I wouldn't plan on get on buying it and playing it. Because, like I said, this is... You could have just made a... You could have just made a simple movie out of this. So. Um, oh, one other thing about my stream last night. Um, one of my regulars. I think I was playing on some... 8-bit dungeon music or 8-bit video game music. I think, yeah. I think the first thing he did, he came on there, he was like, you have any music? Can you play some music? You know, subtly hinting that the music that I was playing wasn't music at all, or it was, to him, it was just trash. You know, it just... You know, again, you know, it's, I, it's very disrespectful when somebody does it. I mean, if you don't like what I'm playing... Just leave. Or, in my case, just come back later because chances are I might be playing something else. I don't tend to play the same genre over and over and over. So, you know, the, the music I play, or I... Probably one of the biggest reasons why I play the music that I play is because of the music that everybody else plays. You know, back when I was checking out other streamers, you know, it was all rap, techno, dubstep, or mainstream bullshit that I have to hear at work every day. You know, it, a whole lot of clockwork orange build up. You know, it just, it gets to a point where I don't want to hear it anymore. So, yeah, I, you know, I tend to, I tend to, you know, I tend to look outside the box. I tend to play music that I never hear anywhere else. I mean, it isn't, it isn't because, I mean, it isn't because I'm trying to be all cultured, and, you know, or you know, trying to be all uppity and my tastes are way better than yours or anything like that. No, it's, it's just because I'm sick of the fucking music that I have to hear every day. So yeah, I'm going to look elsewhere. I want to hear stuff that I, that I'm not being bombarded with. It's also one of the reasons why my uh, favorite kinds of music are my favorites. It's because I don't hear them everywhere else. You know, I could walk into Walmart and Never hear the residents, you know. You know, I can, I can walk into a convenience store, and I don't have to hear Primus blaring in the background. So, um, but later, but anyway, move it along. Later on, he said, "Up, uh, I think he said something like, can you play some rap music?' God, you know, and." And I don't, I don't, he's the kind of guy that doesn't really talk much. But from what little I know about him, he kind of strikes me as a younger, like a younger kid, like a younger person. He just, he kind of struck me as the kind of person that would get into. Yeah, definitely not my cup of tea. So, it, I mean, I've. The only rap I could really get into is probably old school rap, or, or uh, rap music where they actually say something. Or, let me rephrase that. Where they're, for lack of a better word, philosophical. Like, KRS-One. He's the first one that comes to mind. I only have, like, maybe his first two albums. Or, yeah. I think I have another one, too. Um, oh, what is it? The album's called Criminally Minded. Boogie Down Productions, BDP. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't have it on YouTube any or anything, but uh, I have it on an old tablet that I had years ago. But yeah, but like I said, I like, I like rap where they're right. I like again, I like the old school stuff, you know, stuff where they're actually saying something. But I. Oh God! I, let me let me look let me let me look it up. I might mention this guy later on. Here, give me a moment. Almost done. Okay. 
But, um, this guy, uh, Takeshi69, he... I think a lot, I'm guessing a lot of younger people are into this guy. I actually tried listening to some of his music. Most certainly a no-go. Like, like, he's basically noise rap. That's what it was called, noise rap. Like, all he's doing is just ma basically babbling. Uh, but... But, but anyway, um, but like, like I said, if you're ever on my stream, and if you don't like the music I play, just come back later. Chances are I might say something different. I might be playing something different. Or, secondly, um, DJ Screw, he was, he was the one that got me into lo-fi music. And again, I still play it to this day. But, if, if he actually was trying to manipulate me into playing his music, he did a good job of it. Because he didn't just come on my stream and say, Hey man, you need to play some lo-fi music. And he, which again, that's very disrespectful. Just pretty much being an asshole at that point. So, but no, um, he, he just started talking to me. He started out, uh, you know, showing me, you know, showing me how to play, or helping me play Gems of War, where to go, what to do, and all that. And just having some good convo between us, you know, getting to know each other a little bit. And then at some point he just said, yeah, I'm kind of into lo-fi music, you know, and, you know, just out of respect for him, you know, because he, he's cool, and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't try to impose his will on, you know, try to impose his musical will on me or anything, I thought I'd go ahead and check it out, you know, but, again, you know, you know, so, you know, so if you want me to, you know, you want me to check out your kind of music, but, oh, I, I forgot to mention, too, you also have to be willing to take no for an answer, because again, if if I already if I hear your kind of music at Walmart or any or, or if I hear your kind of music at a convenience store, then I don't want to hear it here. So, um, but kind of, but kind of enough on that. Oh damn, I'm kind of going over long on this. And so far, I only had one, I only made one mistake too. Um, but. One big thing that I did, that I did totally different, is uh, for the first time, I actually tried putting together video footage. Um, I just started uh, pasting them, or taking little clips here and there, just going through, uh, downloaded various YouTube videos. Yeah, various YouTube videos, and then taking those and trimming them down to like one or two seconds. The, uh, the booty butt cheeks video, the short booty butt cheeks clip that you saw was one of them. Um... The, the jump scare, the I can't think her name. Think I think it's Carrie, the Carrie or the Exorcist. I'm thinking Exorcist. That one there, class. That's a classic jump scare, uh, off a of maze game. But like I said, that's that was a short clip off a of YouTube video. Um, and then um, and then the Takeshi 69 one. I I had a very hard time trying to make uh, trying to make clip or make clips of him because. Another problem I have with these today's videos is their collage videos. In fact, that at least the Takeshi video footage I went through, I tried watching, I tried uh, going through his. First off, the music is fucking horrible to listen to. And, and, and it's not, and it's not even because, it's not even because I'm an old man or anything like that either. And, you know, it's just I cannot, I can't stand the, I can't. I can't stand the look of them. It's like the the clips only last like one or two seconds, and then they're off to the next clip. So it made it very very hard for me to try to put footage together because I was trying to add I was trying to add Takeshi 69 stuff to that booty butt cheeks. Oh, for those that don't know, um, the uh, the booty butt cheeks clip that's uh that was uh. One of the episodes off of a show called The Boondocks is one of my all-time favorite shows, but I only care for like maybe the first season, to a lesser extent, the second one. But I was trying to add it. I was trying to add Takeshi 69 for the John of the Booty Butchies uh, clip, but like I said, I, I had a hard time finding footage because he do he doesn't stay, stay in one place very long. It's like. 
Video clip Olympics. So, but yeah, and, and even even I'll admit, the 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 clips that I made were probably were probably pretty sloppy. But like I said, I'm kind of new to doing. I'm new to this method, so. Otherwise, um, that's gonna do it for me, everybody. I'm um, just gonna go ahead and call it good here. I've said all the things I wanted to say, and then some. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to go on this long, but it but it happens. Uh, but otherwise, hey, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, and I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye for now.